Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lahari here from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. Today's topic of discussion is application of radiology in implant site assessment. The learning outcome would be to be aware of the application of radiology in implant site assessment. The introduction of this chapter is uh, most importantly, two significant advancements have revolutionized modern practice of dentistry. One is the advent and progress, refi progressive refinement of dental implant rehabilitation, as well as the widespread uptake of three-dimensional computer tomography imaging. It is very important to understand that radiology plays an increasingly crucial role in the successful planning, placement, and long-term follow-up of dental implants. Having said that, we come to the most commonly used imaging techniques for implant placement. From the images that you see here, you, mu you must have understood that it is the intraoral imaging, panoramic imaging, as well as the cone beam computed tomography, which are of importance. Let's look at each of these imaging modalities and their advantages, disadvantages, as well as when they are recommended to be used. Let's start with periapical imaging. The advantage of periapical imaging is that it's readily available, has high resolution, minimal distortion, and lowest financial cost and radiation exposure. So that's a very important um, advantage of periapical imaging. You must understand that when you actually take a good radiograph, uh, paying attention to the angulations, there is very little uh, distortion that you would expect, and most of the time, the the radiograph is a true copy size of the actual tooth size. There are some disadvantages with periapical imaging. Generally, because they have restricted coverage area, you only see that particular amount of, or that particular area, that particular area of tooth, or edentulous area um, that can fit into your periapical view. It cannot assess the buccal and or buccolingual dimension. You only assess it from either of the, uh, you know, you, uh, on the labial surface, uh, which superimposes over the uh, lingual surface of the tooth. Subjected to elongation and foreshortening, depending on the angulation and the expertise, there is anatomic superimposition that could happen, especially if you're looking at the maxillary canine premolar area or the roots of the maxillary premolars and the molars which superimpose over the floor of maxillary sinus. Other disadvantages could be difficult uh, to reproduce geometric uh, projection geometry. If you want to take uh, the similar kind of radiograph in the same area, it may be difficult to get the exact uh, area keeping all parameters, even if you keep all parameters the same. And they may be limited by patient compliance and anatomy as well. The recommendations when should uh, periapical imaging be used specifically for implant site assessment is for initial assessment of single edentula space or short edentula space uh, when there is a short edentula span. For intraoperative imaging during implant placement, that means during the procedure if you want to look at the site again, as well as initial post-operative radiograph and recall imaging. So when you want to reassess the patient after you've placed an implant to check if everything is okay or if the patient has a specific complaint or if the patient is asymptomatic, intraoral periapical radiographs are one of the best radiographs to assess the implant site. Moving on to panoramic imaging. Panoramic imaging has the advantage of again being readily available. There is broad anatomic coverage. You can see the entire maxillary and mandibular arches. It has relatively low financial cost and radiation exposure. Now, the disadvantage is that there is image distortion, anatomic superimposition, and ghost images do occur. Uh, it has relatively low resolution because it's an extra oral method of imaging. Um, you cannot assess the buccolingual dimension again, and it is definitely technique sensitive. You need expertise to actually take the uh, panoramic radiograph as well as interpret it. Recommendations of panoramic radiology or imaging uh, in implant site assessment is primarily for initial examination of multiple edentulous spaces. That means if your patient has two or more different sites of implant um, um, areas where the implant can be placed, then a panoramic uh, exposure would be of help. 
also for radiographic follow-up of multiple implants if your patient is having multiple implants placed in the jaw and you would want to look at the image of these implants in one single image then a panoramic radiograph is enough at the follow-up appointments Next is CBCT imaging, one of the most important advancements and a must-have imaging for implant placement. It has the advantage of having variable field of view uh, from single edentulous sites to full jaws. It depends again on your manufacturer. You could have uh, different sizes of views, either a 5 by 5 mm or um, um, you know a cm, sorry, or an 8 by 5, 8 by 5, 8 by 8, 12 by 9 and so on. Uh, there is three-dimensional tomographic imaging that is involved here. So there is no superimposition at all. Um, dimensionally accurate most of the times. And uh, your image area is exactly the same size as your um, actual tooth size or the bone size that you're looking at. Increasingly accessible these days. And to simulate implant surgery, you have a specific software which allows you to look at the area uh, and simulate the whole process of implant placement and how it would look like after the implant placed inside the uh, jaw. The disadvantage, however, for CBCT is a moderate financial cost as well as radiation exposure. Um, there is susceptibility to beam hardening and artifacts, especially if your patient is having multiple metallic restorations. It is technique sensitive and uh, especially when the patient is, should, you should need the patient to be uh, stable and still um, and without any movement. You require special training for interpretation as well as uh, CBCT is not calibrated for bone density measurements. That means Hounsfield units cannot be really measured uh, unlike a CT scan and definitely there is poor soft tissue contrast. The recommendation for a CBCT imaging in implant dentistry is for following the initial examination that means after you have examined the implant site um, using an intraoral or a panoramic radiograph a cbct is then recommended for thorough radiologic assessment is also recommended before and after bone augmentation in areas where there is lack of bone and augmentation is recommended also post-operatively recommended for symptomatic implants for example if the implant is uh, having mobility or patient is experiencing altered sensation or there's a displaced implant. It is, should be importantly remembered that it's not appropriate for asymptomatic recall imaging. That means when you're looking at a patient or uh, following it up and the patient is having no symptoms with your implant um, and you just want to follow up and assess the implant, then a simple panoramic or an intraoral would be enough. Now let us look at some recommendations for imaging uh, the dental implant patient. This is uh, given by the American Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology. Um, it is divided into some 11 important points. I will go through them one after the other. Recommendation one is that panoramic radiography should be used as an imaging modality of choice in the initial evaluation of dental implant patient. The reason is that it gives you a broad area of coverage of um, the entire jaw and uh, if you're let's say having an implant uh, placement area or edentulous area on one side which is indicated for implant placement and on the other hand you see that on the left side of the jaw you see that or on the right side the opposite side of the jaw you see that there is a large cyst then it should be understood that priority should be given to the pathology patient's health and uh, uh, immediate concerns of the cyst or tumor that you're seeing on the other side become priority uh, and the implant can probably wait because that could be an elective procedure similarly recommendation two is that use intraoral periapical radiography to supplement the preliminary information from panoramic radiography for example, in some areas when you want to see a little more clarity, uh, more uh, a better resolution image, especially the lower anterior or the maxillary anterior region perhaps, then an uh, intraoral periapical view should be used to supplement the panoramic view. Recommendation 3, do not use cross-sectional imaging including cone beam computed tomography as an initial diagnostic imaging examination. Immediately as soon as you have decided uh, that you are going to place an implant in this particular patient, uh, the first or image that is a screening image cannot be a CBCT directly. It should be a panoramic radiograph or an intraoral uh, periapical view first. 
recommendation for the radiographic examination of any potentially uh, potential implant site should include cross sectional imaging orthogonal to the site of interest so again uh, after you've done your image initial two dimensional imaging it should be backed up by three dimensional imaging to assess the bone of and specific pathology in the area before placement of implant so what you understand from recommendation 1 to 4 is that uh, it is important to do an initial plain film radiography like uh, panoramic or uh, intraoral as well as follow it up with a CBCT. So we come to the recommendation 5 which says that CBCT should be considered as image modality of choice for pre-operative cross-sectional imaging of potential implant site. And means when you're placing an implant even though you can do a CT scan, CBCT is one of the best imaging modality because it has, comes with lesser amount of radiation dose and provides you excellent visualization of the potential implant site. Moving on to recommendation 6. CBC should be considered when clinical conditions indicate a need for augmentation procedures or site development before placement of dental implants. That means if you have noticed that the area that you're placing implant, for example, maxillary molar region, requires sinus augmentation or there is a block or particulate bone graft that you need to apply or ramus or symphysis grafting assessment of impacted teeth in the field of interest and evaluation of prior traumatic injury so all of these should be done first before placement of implant and hence a cbct is the uh, imaging modality to be used recommendation 7 says that cbct imaging should be considered a bone reconstruction and augmentation procedures example rich preservation of bone grafting have been performed to treat bone volume deficiencies before implant placement. This is uh, specifically true when you need to do a, um, uh, implant placement, especially in a weight bearing area, uh, molar area, maxillary or mandibular, where the ridge thickness or amount of bone is insufficient and uh, augmentation needs to be done. Recommendation 8 states that in absence of clinical signs or symptoms, um, use intraoral periapical radiography for post-operative assessment of implants. Just like we mentioned previously, this is more than sufficient uh, to use intraoral imaging if you are looking at a single uh, implant site. Panoramic radiograph may be indicated for cases requiring more extensive implant therapy. For example, if you have multiple sites of implant and you're assessing a patient post-operatively just for asymptomatic patients, um, plain imaging like intraoral or panoramic are more than enough. Recommendation 9 is to use cross-sectional imaging. Again, we're talking about cross-sectional. We also call it as a three-dimensional imaging. And one of the best examples is a CBCT. Immediately post-operative, it can be used only if the patient presents with implant mobility or altered sensation, especially if the fixture is in the posterior mandible. So those are the areas that may require CBCT if you want to assess a implant where uh, there are chances of failure. Recommendation number 10, do not use CBCT imaging for periodic review of clinically asymptomatic implants. I think I have emphasized that uh, multiple times already. And recommendation 11, cross-sectional imaging, uh, optimal C CBCT should be considered if implant retrieval is anticipated. That means for any reason the implant has to be retrieved or removed, then it's important that a CBCT image is done uh, for that particular procedure. So these all sum up the recommendations um, for imaging in a patient for whom dental implants are indicated. Having that in mind, let's move on to case one. These are some cases for you to understand uh, better way, uh, about imaging modalities for implant placement. Now these CBCT images that you can see are buccolingual cross sections of an implant case and they demonstrate that um, irregular pneumatization of the alveolar process is there. Um, it looks like a, a molar implant, maxillary region and it is difficult to appreciate it in two dimension imaging definitely. So uh, because you cannot see the buccolingual area in a two dimensional imaging. The sinus floor is positioned more superiorly within the buccal aspect of the alveolar process and more inferiorly positioned in the palatal portion of the site. So you can see clearly that there is thickness of uh, sinus floor is much 
more in the buccal aspect which is indicated by B and lesser in the palatal or the lingual aspect which is indicated with an L. So the effects of this implant is more palatally oriented uh, within the alveolar process and has been placed beyond the sinus floor. So that is something very important to understand here. Case 2 is a mandibular implant. This is a cropped panoramic image which has been taken from a CVCT view to study the left side of the or the, uh, or the site of the mandibular first molar region. So when you look at the vertical height from the alveolar crest to the left inferior alveolar nerve canal, um, the canal is outlined in orange and the line is in yellow. It measures just over 16 mm. But when you actually take a cross-sectional image of the same site, uh, that is the mandibular left first molar region in the buccolingual plane you notice that there is a prominent lingual concavity is there so anatomically this particular patient is having a concavity in the mandible so this concavity actually limits implant placement at an optimal angle relative to the pontic restoration and roots of the adjacent teeth so that is something very important to consider and this sort of imaging cannot be done using a two-dimensional imaging that is a periapical or panoramic and hence it's important to understand that for these cases a CBCT is a must. Case 3 shows you an implant which is displaced into the left maxillary sinus. It's very unfortunate that the implant is actually uh, slipped into the sinus cavity and this warrants surgical removal of the implant and there is mucosal thickening around the displaced implant as well. This is a case 4 of buccolingual and nasolingual cross sections uh, seen in uh, cone beef CT that is on the top left. Uh, these are scans acquired for implant planning at the site of edentulous maxillary left lateral incisor. Uh, given that the remaining teeth are present in tooth supported guide, um, I mean a guide was planned to aid in implant placement. So the guide is a surgical template or a surgical guide is very important. Uh, which can be fabricated after three-dimensional imaging is done. Then a stone model of the patient's arch was digitally scanned and registered with the CBCT data, which is outlined in dark blue, as you can see here. Based on the amount of available bone, the desired position of the prosthetic crown, the ideal position of the lingual implant was determined. Uh, next is that the three-dimensional surface models of maxillae, which are in gray, um, and the maxillary stone model which is in dark blue and digitally designed surgical stent which is in white. So the final surgical stent which is printed through a rapid prototyping technique is securely seated atop a duplicate of the patient's stone model so that you understand the placement of the implant. Also clinical photography of the state, uh, seated surgical implant is done here in the bottom right image which can help in guiding the implant osteotomy procedure. To conclude, based on all the cases that you've seen as well as the recommendations, um, <clears throat> diagnostic imaging is essential for pre-operative planning of implants, uh, intra-operative assessment as well as surgical guidance during implant placement and the post-operative evaluation of recall and symptomatic patients. Clinicians will need to remain um, current, that means have to update themselves with scientific literature and apply appropriate evidence-based treatment decisions that balance diagnostic efficiency, potential radiation risk, as well as healthcare costs. So having said that, it is important to understand that imaging before placing an implant has a very important role in success of the implant. That's all from my side. I would like to thank you and these are the references that I have used.